Here is the fifth and last part of this lecture. In this lecture, we shall see the applications of solar energy in diverse forms. In this part, we shall see solar heating, solar architecture, solar thermal electricity, greenhouse effect, solar kitchen, solar water disinfection system, and solar waste water treatment system. Sunlight has influenced building design since the beginning of the architectural history. We have seen some points and some examples in the previous part of this lecture. Here in this picture, we see the building design which can accommodate the structure suitable for both the conditions during summer as well as in winter. During summer mode, the top filter is open so that the hot air can be drained out. During the winters, the interiors needs warm so that the south facing large windows absorb heat and allow the light to enter inside the room and the upper top filter is closed so that the heat is trapped inside. This is a picture of direct gain passive solar system. In this system, the indoor space acts as a solar collector, heat absorber and distribution system. South facing glass in the northern hemisphere and north facing in the southern hemisphere houses admits solar energy into the building interior where it directly heats through radiant energy absorption or indirectly heats through convection currents the thermal mass in the building such as concrete or masonry floors and walls. The floors and walls acting as thermal mass are incorporated as functional parts of the building and temper the intensity of heat during the day. At night, the heated thermal mass radiates heat into the indoor space. Anatized sun space, also sometimes called a solar room or solarium, is a type of isolated gain solar system with a glazed interior space or room that is part of or attached to a building but which can be completely closed off from the main occupied areas. It functions like an attached greenhouse that makes use of a combination of direct gain an indirect gain system characteristics. A sun space may be called and appear like a greenhouse, but a greenhouse is designed to grow plants whereas a sun space is designed to provide heat and aesthetics to a building. Sun spaces are very popular passive design elements because they expand the living areas of a building and offer a room to grow plants and other vegetation. In moderate and cold climates, however, supplemental space heating is required to keep plants from freezing during extremely cold weather. An attached sun space south facing glass collects solar energy as in a direct gain system. The simplest sun space design is to install vertical windows with no overhead glazing. Sun spaces may experience high heat gain and high heat loss through their abundance of glazing. Although horizontal and sloped glazing collects more heat in the winter, it is minimized to prevent overheating during the summer months. The overhead glazing can be aesthetically pleasing 
An insulated roof provides better thermal performance. Skylights can be used to provide some daylight potential. Vertical glazing can minimize gain in winter. When the angle of the sun is low and yield less heat gain during the summer. Vertical glass is less expensive, easier to install and insulate and not as prone to leaking, fogging, breaking and other glass failures. A combination of vertical glazing and some sloped glazing is acceptable if summer's shading is provided. A well-designed overhang may be all that is necessary to shade the glazing in the summer. Passive solar design refers to the use of sun's energy for the heating and cooling of living spaces by exposure to the sun. When sunlight strikes a building, the building material can reflect, transmit or absorb the solar radiation. In passive solar building design, windows, walls and floors are made to collect, store, reflect and distribute solar energy in the form of heat in the winter and reject solar heat in the summer. In addition, the heat produced by the sun causes air movement that can be predictable in designated spaces. These basic responses to solar heat lead to design elements, material choices and placements that can provide heating and cooling effects in a home. Unlike active solar heating systems, passive systems are simple and do not involve substantial use of mechanical and electrical devices such as pumps, fans or electrical control to move the solar energy. Passive solar design can achieve significant energy savings and reduction of environmental damage without sacrificing functionality or aesthetics. In fact, passive solar design features such as greenhouse, sunroom, solarium can greatly enhance the livability, daylight, views and value of a home at a lower cost per unit of space. A complete passive solar design has five main elements. The goal of passive solar heating system is to capture the sun's heat within the building's elements and to release that heat during periods when the sun is absent, while also maintaining a comfortable room temperature. The two primary elements of passive solar heating are south-facing glass and thermal mass to absorb, store and distribute heat. There are several important approaches to implement these elements. The elements are aperture, absorber, thermal mass, distribution, control. Aperture is the large glass area through which sunlight enters the building. The aperture or apertures should face within 30 degrees of true south and should not be shaded by other buildings or trees from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. on the daily basis during the heating season. The absorber is the hard, darkened surface of the storage element. The surface which could be a masonry wall, floor or water container that sits in the direct path of the sunlight. Sunlight hitting the surface is absorbed as heat. Thermal mass is the material that retain or store the heat produced by the sunlight. While the absorber is an exposed surface, the thermal mass is the material below and behind this surface. Distribution method by which solar heat circulates from the collection and storage points to different areas of the house. A strictly passive design will use the three natural heat transfer modes conduction, convection, and radiation exclusively. 
In some applications, fan, duct, and blowers may also be used to distribute the heat throughout the house. The control system contains roof over hangs that can be used to shade the aperture area during the summer months. Other elements that control under and or overheating include electronic sensing devices such as differential thermostat that signals a fan to turn on, operable vents and dampers that allow or restrict heat flow, low emissivity blinds and awnings. Indirect solar system. In an indirect gain passive solar system, the thermal mass, concrete, masonry or water is located directly behind the south facing glass and in front of the heated indoor space and so there is no direct heating. The position of the mass prevents sunlight from entering the indoor space and can also obstruct the view through the glass. There are two types of indirect gain system. First one is thermal storage wall system or trombe wall and roof pond systems. In a thermal storage wall system, often called a thrombe wall, a massive wall is located directly behind the south facing glass, which absorbs solar energy and releases it selectively towards the building interior at night. The wall can be constructed of cast in place concrete, brick, adobe, stone or solid or filled concrete masonry units. Sunlight enters through the glass and is immediately absorbed at the surface of the mass wall and either is stored or conducted through the material mass to the inside space. The thermal mass cannot absorb solar energy as fast as it enters the space between the mass and the window area. Temperatures of the air in this space can easily exceed 120 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius. This hot air can be introduced into interior spaces behind the wall by incorporating heat distributing vents at the top of the wall. A thermal storage wall typically consists of a 4 to 16 inches thick masonry wall coated with a dark heat absorbing finish or a selective surface and covered with single or double layer of high transmissive glass. If vents are left open at night or on cloudy days, a reversal of convective air flow will occur, wasting heat by dissipating it outdoors. Vents must be closed during the night, so radiant heat from the interior surface of the storage wall heats the indoor space. Generally, vents are also closed during summer months when heat gain is not needed and there are many variations of the trombe wall systems nowadays available. An unvented thermal storage wall, technically not a trombe wall, captures solar energy on the exterior surface, heats up and conducts heat to the interior surface, where it radiates from the interior wall and to the indoor space later in the day. Thermal mass walls are best suited to sunny winter climates that have high diurnal or day-night temperature variations, for example, southwest, mountain west areas. They do not perform as well in cloudy or extremely cold climates or in climates where there is not a large diurnal temperature swing. Nighttime thermal losses through the thermal mass of the wall can still be significant in cloudy and cold climates. The wall loses stored heat in less than a day and then leak heat, which dramatically raises backup heating environments. Covering the glazing with tight-fitting movable insulation panels during lengthy cloudy periods and nighttime hours will enhance performance of a 
thermal storage system. Second in the list of indirect solar system or indirect gain passive solar system is the roof pond system. In this system, a pond is built on the roof as shown in the picture. Roof pond is a passive cooling technique based on the increased heat capacity of cheap and widely available water. In general, the pond is covered during the daytime to prevent heating and open at night to be cooled. Roof ponds can be inexpensive, enclosing water in plastic bags, metal or fiberglass tanks with rigid transparent plastic covers. Now we shall discuss about solar thermal collectors. These are also called as integral collector storage or ICS system. Solar batch water heaters are the most basic and simplest type of solar thermal collector and can be best described as basically a tank in the sun. They are called batch water heaters because the collector is both a thermal storage tank and solar collector in one in which the water is heated and is stored a batch at a time, hence their name. The acronym for a batch type solar water heater is ICS, meaning Integrated Collector and Storage. Batch water heaters or ICS are plumbed in line with the domestic water system to preheat the water for conventional or instantaneous water heaters. As they rely on mains pressure to circulate the water, no pumps, controls or electricity is needed. When hot water is required by the household, the solar preheated water is drawn into the conventional water heating system under mains pressure. Second in the list is evacuated tube collector. The evacuated tube collector consists of a number of rows of parallel transparent glass tubes connected to a header pipe. These glass tubes are cylindrical in shape. Therefore, the angle of the sunlight is always perpendicular to the heating absorbing tubes, which enables these collectors to perform well even when sunlight is low, such as when it is early in the morning or late in the afternoon or when shaded by clouds. Evacuated tube collectors are particularly useful in the areas with cold cloudy wintry weathers. So how do solar evacuated tube collectors work? The evacuated tube collectors are made of a single or multiple rows of parallel transparent glass tubes supported on a frame and each tube consists of a thick glass outer tube and thinner glass inner tube called a twin glass tube system or a thermoflask tube which is covered with a special coating that absorbs solar energy but inhibits the heat loss. The tubes are made of borosilicate or soda lime glass which is strong, resistant to high temperatures and has a high transmission for solar irradiation. Evacuated tube collectors do not heat the water directly within the tubes. Instead, air is removed or evacuated from the space between the two tubes forming a vacuum, hence the name evacuated tubes. This vacuum acts as an insulator, reducing any heat loss significantly to the surrounding, either through convection or radiation, making the collector much more efficient than the internal insulating that flat plate collectors have to offer. We shall see this in the next. With the assistance of this vacuum, evacuated tube collectors generally produce high fluid temperature than they are possible to collect in flat plate counterparts so may become very hot in summer.
नेक्स्ट इन द लिस्ट इज सोलर एयर कलेक्टर्स सोलर हॉट एयर कलेक्टर्स आर माउंटेड ऑन साउथ फेसिंग वर्टिकल वॉल्स और रूफ द सोलर रेडिएशन रीचिंग द कलेक्टर हीट द एब्जॉर्बर प्लेट एयर पासिंग थ्रू द कलेक्टर पिक्स अप द हीट फ्रॉम द एब्जॉर्बर प्लेट फ्रीजिंग ओवर हीटिंग एंड लीक्स आर लेस ट्रबलसम फॉर सोलर एयर कलेक्टर्स दैन फॉर लिक्विड कलेक्टर्स an air collector is a simple flat plate collector used mainly for the space heating air flows through the collector by natural convection or when forced by a fan since liquid is a better heat conductor solar collectors using water or a heat transfer fluid are most suited to hot water heating for homes a solar hot water collector is most often used for space heating next in the list is flat plate solar collector a flat plate solar collector is an insulated box covered by glass or plastic with a metal absorber plate on the bottom The solar flat plate collectors consist of a blackened metal absorber plate and water pipes enclosed within a sealed glazed and insulated metal or wooden box. Pipes are shouldered to the absorber plate and carry liquid that is heated by the sun and in a direct heating system. Water is heated as it circulates through the panels to the storage tank. in indirect systems the sun's energy heats a glycol water mixture that cannot freeze and which in turn heats the water in the tank while this type of solar hot water system is cheap and easy to install the problem with flat plate collectors is that they are flat this produces one limitation to their efficiency as they can only operate at maximum efficiency when the sun is directly overhead at midday at other times the sun's rays are striking the collector at varying angles bouncing off the glazed material thereby reducing their efficiency here is a picture explaining how solar thermal systems work the different installations at different parts in the house and outside the walls of the house ensure that we can maximize the use of solar power rather than using electricity solar energy will supply hot water for dishwashers and sinks second solar energy will supply hot water for washing machines third solar energy will supply hot water for hydraulic floor heating solar energy will supply hot water for the bathrooms and solar collectors installed at the roof absorb energy from the sun transferring it to the solar control panel a picture in the left side of the slide shows solar water heaters facing the sun to maximize the gain here in this picture two systems have been explained a for heating water using solar energy through solar collectors and second b is heating water as well as heating the room using solar collectors as well as photovoltaic solar cells solar radiation heats the collector along with the water contained inside the hot water which can reach up to 90 degrees celsius circulates between the collector and the buffer storage tank the heat exchanger releases solar heat to the water in the buffer storage tank the buffer storage tank provides heat both at night and on cold days
Next in the list is solar chimney. A solar chimney is a type of passive solar heating and cooling system that can be used to regulate the temperature of a building as well as providing ventilation. Like a trunk wall or solar wall, solar chimneys are a way to achieve energy efficient building design. It's also a way of improving the natural ventilation of the buildings by using convection of air heated by passive solar energy. A simple description of a solar chimney is that of a vertical shaft utilizing solar energy to enhance the natural stack ventilation through a building. The solar chimney has been in use for centuries, particularly in the Middle East and Near East by Persians as well as in Europe by the Romans. In its simplest form, the solar chimney consists of a black painted chimney. During the day, solar energy heats the chimney and in the air within it creating an updraft of air in the chimney. The suction created at the chimney's base can be used to ventilate and cool the building below. In most parts of the world, it is easier to harness wind power for such ventilation as with a wind catcher, but on hot windless days, a solar chimney can provide ventilation where otherwise there would be none. Here is the picture of a passive downdraft cool tower, a technology closely related to the solar chimney is the evaporative downdraft cool tower. In the areas with a hot arid climate this approach may contribute to a sustainable way to provide air conditioning for the building. The principle is to allow water to evaporate at the top of the tower either by using evaporative cooling pads or spraying water. Evaporation cools the incoming air causing a downdraft of cool air that will bring down temperature inside the building. Airflow can be increased by using a solar chimney on the opposite side of the building to help in venting hot air to the outside. This concept has been used for the visitor center of Zion National Park. The visitor center was designed by High Performance Buildings Research of the National Renewable Energy Laboratories. The cross section of the building showing integrated design strategies here explained in the picture. Ancient air conditioning cools buildings sustainably. In India, the ancient buildings had natural cooling system using water since very long time. At the base of the building, there is built a vast pool of water, a cooling concept taken directly from the step well structures developed by Rajasthan over 1500 years ago to provide refuge from the desert heat. Here, at the base of the building, rainwater is collected, which is allowed to evaporate and works as central cooling system upon evaporation. Based on this technology, the fountains at the public places, in the parks, or inside the building or the large rooms, there is water walls or water screen. The water evaporates to cool the temperature inside the room. Here are some more pictures of water cooling system installed inside the house based on the fountain system.
here is another picture explaining how fountains work evaporative cooling lowers indoor air temperature by evaporating water it is an effective in hot and dry climate where the atmospheric humidity is low in evaporated cooling the sensible heat of air is used to evaporate water thereby cooling the air which in turn cools the living space of the building increase in contact between water and air increases the rate of evaporation the presence of a water body such as a pond lake sea near the building or a fountain in the courtyard can provide a cooling effect Here are some more pictures of water cooling system by evaporation. In the first system we can see a canal is covered by solar panels. The solar panels covers the canal and prevents the water from being evaporated so that the water is available for irrigation even in the hot dry conditions. In turn the slow evaporation of water keeps the lower side of the panels cool so that efficiency of the solar panels are not compromised because of excessive heat in the second picture the same explanation is shown solar canals to produce energy while slowing water loss in the third picture the floating solar panels are now very popular in many areas in the world to protect the ponds from drying during the summer season the solar panels floating on the water protects the water from being evaporated and in turn the water in the pond abolishes excessive heat of the solar panels thus preventing the compromisation of its efficiency due to excessive heat in some areas where the dust storms are infrequent the power production creates employment to the uneducated who are especially employed to clean the surface of the solar panels so that the energy production is not compromised now we shall see the mechanism of water purification using solar energy solar water purifiers work by using sunlight to change contaminated water into fresh smelling good tasting and safe drinking water as the sunlight raises the temperature of the water the water is vaporized and leaves contaminants behind a solar still in this example distills water with substances dissolved in it by using the heat of the sun to evaporate water so that it may be cooled and collected thereby purifying it in solar water still impure water is contained outside the collector where it is evaporated by the sunlight shining through the clear plastic glass and then the distilled water is collected into a fresh water tank Next in the list is solar desalination. Solar desalination is a technique to produce water with a low salt concentration from sea water or brine using solar energy. There are two common methods of solar desalination. Either using the direct heat from the sun or using electricity generated by solar cells to power a membrane process. Methods of solar desalination have been employed by humankind for thousands of years. It is a simple device that works using the same natural process of the natural rainfall production. A transparent cover encloses a pan where saline water is placed. The latter traps solar energy within the enclosure, heating up the sea water and evaporating it. the condensation is produced after words on the inner face of the sloping transparent cover and all the salts inorganic and organic components and microbes are left behind 
There are two primary means of achieving desalination using solar energy. First, through the phase change or thermal input or in a single phase through mechanical separation. The phase change or multi-phase can be accomplished by either direct or indirect solar distillation. Single phase desalination is predominantly accomplished in a solar powered desalination unit which uses photovoltaic cells that produce electricity to drive pumps although there are experimental methods being researched using solar thermal collection to provide this mechanical energy. In indirect or single phase solar power desalination Two different technological systems are combined. A solar energy collection system, for example, through the use of photovoltaic panels and proven desalination systems such as reverse osmosis or RO are combined. The main single phase process or membrane process consists of reverse osmosis or RO and electrodialysis or ED. Single phase solar Desalination is predominantly accomplished by the use of photovoltaic cells that produce electricity to drive pumps used for reverse osmosis desalination. Nowadays, there are over 15,000 desalination plants around the world. Of these plants, almost 70% of them using RO method which makes RO process responsible for 44% of the desalination production capacity internationally. However, alternative experimental methods are being researched which use solar thermal collection to provide mechanical energy to drive the reverse osmosis process. In reverse osmosis desalination systems, sea water pressure is raised above the natural osmotic pressure forcing pure water through membrane pores to the fresh water side. Reverse osmosis RO is the most common desalination process in terms of installed capacity due to its superior energy efficiency compared to thermal desalination systems despite requiring extensive water pretreatment. Furthermore, Part of the consumed mechanical energy can be reclaimed from the concentrated brine effluent with an energy recovery device. Solar power can also be used for irrigation to the fields. The pumps used for the transport of water are equipped with solar cells. The solar energy absorbed by the cells is then converted into electrical energy via a generator which then feeds an electric motor driving the pump. Most of the traditional pumps mainly work with a diesel engine or with a local power grid. However, these two modes of operation present disadvantages compared to solar pumps. Here in the picture we can see a tube well operated by solar power. Below are the pictures where the water is pumped from a borehole using photovoltaic solar panel and used for drip irrigation to the fields. Another picture shows water from a well can be drawn using pump powered by solar panel and used for domestic purposes as well as irrigation. Here is another method of purification of water from the seawater. That is prototype of solar seawater still. Solar seawater still or solar water still can also be utilized for treatment of polluted water. A solar still distills water using the heat of the sun to evaporate, cool and collect the water. 
these are used in the areas where drinking water is unavailable so that clean water is obtained from dirty water or from plants by exposing them to the sunlight in this picture a simple basin type solar still has been shown the construction is very easy the required materials are 2 to 4 stones a plastic film or transparent glass a cubic hole in moist ground is created of about 30 cm or 12 inches on each side into the center of this hole a collection container is placed then a sheet of plastic film is stretched over the hole stills can also be made from water bottles or plastic bags the stones are placed in such a way so that there is a dip in the middle side the water in the ditch evaporates and the evaporated water condenses at the film in the inner layers and then the water drips along with the slope and collects at the middle container hence the clean water is obtained from dirty water collected in the ditch based on a similar principle as solar water is still a solar is still water cone can be constructed very easily and can be made available to the population in the tribal lands or far off places where availability of drinking water is rare the water cone is an ingenious way to turn salt water into fresh water or dirty water into fresh water on average one water cone can be produced very easily at very low cost of about 20 euros and it is possible to provide clean water up to next 4 5 years it is also recyclable and non inflammable on an average one water cone can produce 1 liter of water per day so if several water cones are placed then the consumption for a community can be met on demand Here is an interesting experiment which became very popular for obtaining clean water for tribal populations and far off villages. This is called SODIS or solar water disinfection. SODIS application in Indonesia using clear PET polyethylene terphthalate plastic beverage bottles is very popular experiment. This uses clean PET bottles the bottles are filled with water and the cap is closed exposed in the sunlight for at least 6 hours or for 2 days under very cloudy conditions the stored water in the sodis bottle are now fit for drinking directly from the bottles or from clean cups the ultraviolet part of the sunlight can be utilized to kill the pathogens in water the sodis method uses a combination of uv light and increased temperature the solar th thermal th for disinfecting water using only sunlight and pet plastic bottles sodis is a free and effective method for decentralized water treatment usually applied at the household level and is recommended by the world health organization as a viable method for household water treatment and safe storage sodis is already applied in numerous developing countries the treatment time on sunny days is 6 hours on cloudy days is 2 days Here is shown the mechanism of disinfection of microbes by sodis method sun's ultraviolet radiation 
acts on microorganisms and disrupts its genetic material dna or rna and this also causes the rupture of the membrane and disruption of respiratory pathways of the microbes along with potassium ion leakage the microbes eventually die leaving behind free clean water another method of water purification is solar reduction of arsenic or soras that is photo oxidation and removal of arsenic from the water soras removes arsenic in a two step processor in the first step arsenic 3 which only weakly adsorbed to iron hydroxide is oxidized to strongly adsorbing iron 5 in the second step iron 3 hydroxides formed from naturally present iron in the water or added in small amounts that is 5 mg per liter along with 4 to 8 drops of lemon juice or citrate ions are allowed to settle to the bottom of the container with the adsorbed arsenic 5 and the clear water is decanted instead of adding chemical oxidants such as chlorine or permanganate reactive oxidants are produced photochemically with sunlight solar oxidation and removal of arsenic or soras is a simple method that uses irradiation of water with sunlight in pet or other uv a transparent bottles to reduce arsenic levels from drinking water The SORAS method is based on a photochemical oxidation of arsenic 3 followed by precipitation or filtration of arsenic 5 adsorbed on iron 3 oxides as shown in this picture. Groundwater in Bangladesh and West Bengal of India naturally contains iron 2 and iron 3 and therefore SORAS could reduce arsenic contents and would be available to everyone at virtually no cost it would be a water treatment method used at household level to treat small quantities of drinking water in this slide solar trees to save land area picture is shown the solar panels can be arranged in the form of a tree so that there is enough possibility of produce electricity as well as saving the land at the same time here is another picture of similar arrangement for urban land where the open spaces are limited and power demand is high this design can save the land as well as meet the supply according to the demand here is the, in the picture categories of concentrated solar power technology is shown these are parabolic trough where the components are reflector absorber tube and solar field piping second one is linear frontal reflector where curved mirrors are employed and a central absorber tube and reconcentrator is placed the third design is parabolic dish it contains a parabolic reflector and a receiving engine and the fourth design is central receiver where salt is placed at a solar tower and molten by heliostats which reflect the solar light and concentrate it to the tower to melt the salt concentrated solar power is also called concentrating solar power or concentrated solar thermal or csp the system uses mirrors or lenses 
to concentrate a large area of sunlight or solar thermal energy onto a small area. The electrical power is produced when the concentrated light is converted to heat, which drives a heat engine, usually a steam turbine connected to a electrical power generator or powers a thermochemical reaction as shown in this picture. Here in the picture is solar molten concentrator, molten salt concentrator is shown. Here in the picture, molten salt solar power concentrator is shown. Hot salt or the molten salt is placed on the top of the tower in a tank and can be used in solar power generation to store heat until it is needed. Large mirrors surrounding this tower focus the sun's rays onto this central collection tower. The molten salt is heated in the tower and then pumped into a storage tank. The heated salt is then pumped through a steam generator and the steam is used to power an electrical turbine to produce electricity. Upon the exchange of heat, the cool down salt is returned to the second storage tank and ultimately sent back to the cycle and transferred to the molten salt container at the top of the tower. A simple form of solar concentrator is the solar cookers. Here, solar energy is utilized to form steam and the steam is utilized to cook the food. In the second picture, the sun's rays are reflected from a primary reflector and concentrated to a secondary reflector which ultimately concentrates the heat to the cooking part and cooking of food can be accomplished. In the below there are two pictures where cooking of food is shown. Here are shown some more designs of solar cookers. Based on the method of concentrating solar energy, solar kitchen can be designed for group of families or for a community. In such an endeavor, world's largest 38,500 meal solar kitchen in India has been established at Mount Abu Taleti in Rajasthan. The solar kitchen is situated at a height of 1,219 meters above the sea level. It boasts of a six module solar kitchen which is based on a solar steam cooking system and a total of 84 parabolic disc concentrators shell type receivers. Each over parabolic concentrator has a reflective surface area of 9.2 square meters and reflects sunlight on the receivers by special white glass pieces. Steam is collected in the header pipes which is then directed via insulated pipes to cooking vessels in the kitchen. The system generates temperature up to 650 degrees and 3500 to 4000 kilograms of steam per day. The food is cooked in 200 to 400 liters capacity cooking pots producing an average of 20,000 meals a day and up to 38,500 meals per day during periods of peak solar radiation at maximum.
Here is shown the layout plan of the solar concentrator integrated with the kitchen is shown. A total of $5 million have been spent on this endeavor. The Academy for a Better World is interested in renewable energy technologies and program is a part of a special demonstration project of Ministry of New and Renewable Energy, MNRE, Government of India. In another such example, an array of solar panels installed atop of Tirumala Temple, Nitya Anandam Canteen in Tirupati. This system is capable to facilitate operation of steam cookers and one of the largest solar steam cooking system in the world. Next in the list we shall see sun drying that is drying of fruits and vegetables and food materials using solar radiation employing a solar dryer which is very easy to construct. Prepared food, fruits and vegetables are placed on drying trays. Stainless steel screening and thin wood lath are good materials for home constructed drying trays. Sun drying of fruits is practiced in tropical and some subtropical regions where there is plenty of sunshine round the year and practically little or no rains during the drying season. It is carried out in open sun. Equipment essentially consists of drying trays and few other items. Solar drying utilizes the sun as the heat source and a foil surface inside the dehydrator helps to increase the temperature from 37 degrees Celsius to 93 degrees Celsius. Ventilation speeds up the drying. Shorter drying times reduces the risk of food spoilage or mold growth. Here is a simple layout plan which also can be constructed indigenously and it consists of several stories of tray containers. Dehydration is a great way to put up food second to freezing. It is the best way to preserve nutrition without adding sugar or salt and if when use the power of the sun, one won't need to spend any money or electricity. In a desert climate, one can just put the food out on a screen trays, but just a bit of humidity in the air makes it, this approach very risky. Food can spoil before enough moisture is removed. That is why one should build a solar food dryer. There are two basic designs for solar food dryers, direct and indirect. Direct dryers are just a box with a piece of glass on the top as shown in the picture in the next slide. Here in the first picture, direct dryer is shown. It is just a box with a piece of glass on the top. Second picture is of indirect dryer which uses a box to collect the heat from the sun and then thanks to the fact that hot air rises to an elevation and this takes that heat up into an enclosed box that contains the food we want to dry. Direct dryers upgrade the direct quality of the food and possibly nutrition value due to the direct UV exposure. In this picture, some prepared food material such as papad, 
in India, which is a very common delicacy in the Indian cuisine, is being dried under the direct solar radiation. In the second picture, a low cost climax UV stabilized LDPE film solar dryer is shown. Food processing technology is one of the priority sectors in our countries. We integrate in and introduce this technology with solar dryer and introduce at micro level in the village to help the society. This approach finds a solution for preservation of long shelf life and for rural employment. It is noteworthy that technology will process the food products with zero energy cost. Here are shown some more pictures. Food products processed in solar dryers are superior compared to conventionally dried products. In the sense of better hygiene with no contamination, higher nutritive values with longer shelf life and pleasing appearance along with saving electricity and energy is an advantage of slow solar drying. Fruit bars involving mangoes, pineapple, papaya, guava, grapes and chiku or sapota is easily dried using solar dryers. Vegetables, leafy vegetables, spices, forest produce, medicinal and herbal products food items, chemical powder, and a number of similar food materials can be dried using solar dryer, which can be indigenously built using common materials available. Here is some more picture of drying of vegetables using indigenously built solar dryer. In the hilly regions or in the mountain regions, this structure is an advantage. Using the power of the sun to dry fruit has resulted in a dramatic increase in the value of apricots and income to the farmers. In this picture, cheap zero emission solar dryer increasing fishing profits have been shown. The cost of installation is very low, that is $30 and pays for itself in 2.5 months. The fuel and emissions are zero and it lasts for 4 to 5 years and even more. So the profit is huge. Here in the picture is shown drying of persimmon, a fruit that is harvested during the autumn and dried altogether in the winters to provide a very nice supply. This process increases the income of the farmers immensely. immensely. Here are some more food items shown which are dried using solar heating. This is perhaps the easiest method of making us indigenous solar dryer in which the steps are shown. The heat from the sun's rays is collected by the UV plastic which covers the outer surface the air in the kiln chamber becomes heated with this absorbed heat. Outside air can be used to prevent damage caused by the drying too of, of the food too fast. Then the air is drawn through the lumber slack collecting moisture and air is drawn by circulating fans is recycled through kiln or exhausted and extra air is 
is exhausted outside a number of fruit vegetables and processed food can be dried using this process very nicely and conveniently solar power sewage treatment plant utilizes solar power for portable toilets for a self power waste water treatment solution to some of the sanitation issues in developing countries the solar radiations are concentrated onto the waste water that is sewage water and it generates an electrochemical reaction with human waste in water which generates micro killing oxidants and releases the hydrogen gas solar radiation contains uv rays which disrupts genetic material of the microbes and ruptures its cell membrane along with leakage of potassium ions so that the microbes are killed additionally the hydrogen gas can be collected as a fuel gas the self contained photovoltaic power domestic toilet and wastewater treatment system is beneficial for developing countries especially in africa this can be constructed at community basis and the treatment of sewage water can be accomplished next in the list is the application of solar energy in greenhouse greenhouse provides absorption of heat and light inside a polyhouse to protect the plants and vegetation from biting colds such botanical greenhouses are also called botanical gardens and of immense help to feed the population during the winters greenhouses saves the crops from untimely rain protects from microbial pest damages and controls evaporation of water and helps in saving water as well greenhouses helps in enrichment of carbon dioxide and helps in saving energy from sunlight and protects the crops from freezing during the winters also it protects the crop from weeds dust uv damage termites and hard winds greenhouses minimizes the use of insecticides or pesticides as the attack of these insects and pests are highly unlikely because of the covered structure greenhouses are useful for cultivating the genetically modified crops and delicate plants another application of solar energy for agriculture is vernalization or cold treatments to plants in a greenhouse seeds are vernalized in order to make crosses over the winter the seeds are germinated in petri dishes and then kept in a fridge for around 7 weeks to provide the cold period that is called vernalization needed to stimulate the young plants to reproduce the vernalized plants are then spotted individually and transferred to either greenhouse or the field these plants will start to flower in another 6 weeks so the beginning years of the crop can be spent in a refrigerator or an incubator for almost 7 weeks therefore the flowering and fruiting time of the crop can be reduced to 6 weeks 
and in the short winter period in extreme cold climate regions a crop can be harvested within a small time vernalization is originated from a latin word vernus that is that means of the spring is the acquisition of a plant's ability to flower in the spring by exposure to prolonged cold of winter or by an artificial equivalent after vernalization plants have acquired the ability to flower but they may acquire and require additional seasonal cues or weeks of growth before they will actually flower Many plants grown in temperate climates require vernalization and must experience a period of low winter temperature to initiate or accelerate the flowering process. This ensures that reproductive development and seed production occurs in spring and summer rather than in autumn. The needed cold is often expressed in chill hours. Typical vernalization temperatures are between 5 and 10 degrees celsius that is 40 to 50 degrees fahrenheit for many perennial plants such as fruit tree species a period of cold is needed first to induce dormancy and then later after the requisite period of time reemergence from that dormancy prior to flowering many monocarpic annuals and biennials including some ectotypes of arabidopsis thalina the winter cereal such as wheat must go through a prolonged period of cold before flowering occurs this method has revolutionized the agriculture system and harvest of crops for the population in very cold climates such as in russia very successfully as the designs of photovoltaic systems are improving day by day the application of photovoltaics have been employed in many of the day to day life activities as well as equipments in the picture is shown some examples such as solar powered boat solar power portable charger for mobile cell phones solar powered phone booth solar power school buses for commute and for tourism here in the picture is shown 27 passenger municipal bus powered by solar panels solar fan solar music and solar bus store and library at the stops now in the conclusion here you can address one assignment question which of the solar energy applications do you think more crucial to develop further and why please write a two to three paragraphs and submit to my email you can also ask your queries and send it to my email here we conclude the last part of this lecture next we shall learn about wind energy and marine energy